So before we get started, I just like everybody to, whether you're listening to this in the podcast or whether you're sitting here with us, just take a moment to take a deep breath in. And just hold that breath. Close your eyes. And relax your breath. Keep your eyes closed. Take another deep breath in. And now just pay attention to how you're sitting. Just tuck your chin a little bit. That'll open your chest and heart a little bit. Straighten your spine. Relax your breath again. Take another deep breath. And hold it. And as we go through the conversation here, whenever you start feeling yourself getting a little agitated or excited about anything, just remember to take a breath and we'll relax your breath. Breathe normally. As I said, when I, the first time I heard Caden speak, it was in conversation with Kimberly Ann Johnson. And there were things that came up in that conversation that hmm. touched on, I guess, something that's become central to my own practice, but also that I teach you. It's, for me, it's a it's not a very well defined thing. And the best way I could describe it was the sacred wound. Now, it's basically the beginning of my conversation with Katie. So then more recently, I saw a post from Katie talking about her wedding several years ago. And this moment in the wedding of a turning towards marriage. And in my mind, these things became connected. So that's kind of, that for me is the background of what we're going to talk about today. But Kate, you've been doing some interesting work around, and I believe with women, do you, do you work at all with men, do you think, or only with men? Oh, I work with men and women. Um, mm -hmm. My work attracts more women, and there are offerings that are just for women, but um, I work with women and men. So you were doing a, sock, a chakra series recently, and um, can you talk a bit about that? Sure. And particularly how that might relate to men and to women and how it might be different for us? What was the last and the last part of your sentence? The, well, my... and, and how that might be different for us as men or as women. Well, there is there is a um, one difference that I think is profound, <clears throat> and it's hidden in some of the um, old tantric text. And I'm not a I'm not a teacher of tantra. Um, I don't claim to necessarily practice tantra. I do offer a woman's temple that has a tantric lineage um, in the sense that we're honoring Spanda or the, the movement of energy from spirit to matter and matter to spirit, the exchange or the reciprocity through our bodies and our ability to alchemize energy through through our bodies. That offering is particularly for women and how the the female, uh, biologically female body alchemizes energy. Um, but <clears throat> that being said, chakras are a, are a lifelong um, in in depth dive into. Um, what my, the way my work is framed is our spiritual nervous system. So 
these are energetic portals or divine spiritual portals that are directly connected into nerve plexes and into our cerebral spinal fluid. And it's a way of communicating and accessing energies and information from the etheric interfacing into the physical. So the nine month apprenticeship that I'm um we're in the first third of that nine months still is about <clears throat> realigning our chakras uh, with the with the operation or operation system of of the spiritual nervous system and we're looking at our bodies in the way that we process energy I don't even like to use the word process energy but the the way that we utilize information and take that information into our lives and into our actions it's a it's a deep dive into the subconscious and the hidden operating systems one thing i and i have men and women both in that apprenticeship uh one thing that I find interesting when we look at men and women or the masculine and the feminine coming into balance with the chakras is that we want a certain amount of the chakras to, to align and be compatible. And we want the other ones to be opposing. And as we go up our individual chakras, the way we want more aligned, so say four out of the seven physical chakras, I teach a transpersonal model that goes all the way up to 13, but we're going to stay on the body in this conversation. And even in my apprenticeship, we stay on the body. So the seven chakras, we want maybe four out of the seven to be compatible in alignment vibrating the same and then the others the other three are there for our expansion they're there for our growth we need the contrast to create something new um and to help us evolve and what i watched is the journey when we go into yoga classes it's it's Oh, it's about the journey up the chakras. Usually you're taken up the chakras. And that is the masculine journey. The, the masculine journey is to move up the chakras. The feminine journey is actually to descend down. Because where, where women are headed is onto the earth plane where Mother Earth is, is like our most profoundly perfect example of the divine feminine the higher state of or expression of the feminine so our journey is down the chakras the masculine journey is up the chakras and as men or the masculine rises up we look at maybe we could call it like father sky as that profound vast holding space of the uh, a mastery of the masculine expression so as the male energy rises up <clears throat> they start safe they start with safety at the root and often you'll find that this masculine thinking it becomes more and more vague for them as they move up into the ethereal realms, into the realm of the heart, into the realm of the intuition, into the realm of sight. Whereas the female journey is a journey down into that rooted safety. And then from that root, we rise back up. So when we meet at the second chakra, in the space of for I don't use the word a lot but because this is kind of the title of our conversation when we meet there at the sacred womb 
it takes the feminine a long time to get there because she has to descend all the way down through her chakras into the roots to establish safety to then rise again and meet the masculine at at the sacral chakra the masculine starts quite safe and really i'm a fan of men so i don't really like saying this but a lot of men just need to know you're not going to kill them and that's enough for them to want to connect in that way so we see that in this model right like you can like one thing about that person or whatever it is and and that's enough to connect and women really have this long journey to get to the place where they're safe enough to actually open I'm not saying that every woman goes through that process before she connects in that way or that it's ever taught or held in that way for us but this is the energetics of of how I can tie your question about the chakras into um, what we've decided to explore in our topic today. <laughs> hey, thank you. I, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but um, and and that really helped. That was that was that was that was, that was really good. So, I mean, I came up with this word or this idea of the sacred womb as something that. I didn't really know what it meant, but it was the only way I could describe the feeling that I get and that I watch around men as we are around women. And yeah, lots of times our first impulse is, is, a, is a very basic kind of sexual genital response. But I've also noticed how when we are around women, and I've and one of my favorite examples was of being a logging camp that was run by a, by a woman. And I didn't notice anything structurally different, but the feel was different. Now, I see that also in all kinds of other places where when, when we as men are in the company of women, and it's not just an etiquette thing and it's not just a cultural thing, there's also a sense of there's something else happening. And it's you know, the only way I can think about it is that there's some, we feel something about you that as we get, as we get more sensitive to that, we want to go deeper than just that initial, you know, very basic kind of experience of, 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 of a woman's body. There's something else about being women that, and the only way I could think about that was that there is this generative, you called it, you know, alchemizing from, from energy into the matter. I think that's how you said it, I can't remember the exact words. But, but when I'm around women, I feel something. It's an excitement that has to do with, it's not just what I would have understood as a young man in sexual excitement, it's something else. And so I thought about, well, there's something sacred happening, or I would describe it as sacred because I have struggled to put any kind of words around it, but I feel it. And I think a lot of what I'm learning as I'm teaching and working with you, and as I'm looking at my own journey through marriages and children, having daughters and now having granddaughters and watching my son is that probably the most profound thing I can do is to become more sensitive to to women's girls experiences of the world because you know, I thought I talk about the woman I love as both my oracle and my siren you know, she's giving me information, not usually in a way that I understand it or that I can make sense of it, but if I pay attention, it starts to open things up. And if I'm not paying attention, 
then then it becomes a siren call basically to shipwreck myself to there's some kind of opening has to happen so i describe you know what i call this path of the sacred masculine is about not just a, a simple kind of holding space for the feminine in myself but also in, in you and the women but also how do I start to feel more what what your experience you the information that, that you're dealing with for lack of a better word that most of the time this culture has you know very masculine very goal oriented linear culture has very little space for that's a lot of words, but that's my effort to try to understand the sacred or the short version of the sacred thing. So when you describe the movement up and then back down, I mean there's a lot happening there, but I'm not even in my body. I'm not aware. So I I think what's happening in my practice is that I'm becoming a little more sensitive to the fact that there's more going on than that. I have any sort of stuff there? Yeah, I, I sense that in your practice, you're learning to feel and sense subtle energy. And, and then in that feeling, we begin with our own lenses, really, to translate that subtle energy. So... I'm careful to, it, I was born with a lot of intuitive gifts that got nurtured very young. So so my sensitivity toward the subtle and my language with the subtle is quite developed. But I'm careful to not jump to translate for, for anyone else because this is such a personal relationship. And I, I think what you're seeking and what you're feeling is is what is seeking you. And it's it's the presence. But the conversation today is, is about how what you're learning and how you're learning to approach the feminine expression of all of that. Because let's not we're in this realm of polarities and in the polarity the two make the whole so let's not completely leave out the masculine and let us dare to say that all of the expressions are sacred so we don't even have to title it the sacred or divine feminine or masculine because they're all sacred it's whether you're aware of the sacredness or not and some expressions appear that there's ignorance or or there's unaware there's an unaware aspect of a being for them to even be able to act the way they're acting that doesn't mean that they're not sacred or that they're not in the sacredness. They're in the maturing of their humanness. And I think we leave a lot of people out when we, when we title in that way. We, we leave people out of the conversation and out of the evolution. Because ultimately it's all of our evolution. And where we all are are headed or or where we assume we want to go is toward the divine. And when we pause and we start to learn the language of the subtle, we realize that 
<clears throat> we're living we're living it we're living in it and so there are ways in which we honor that through ritual through prayer through ceremony and you've taken a seat of of great on on like an extension of honoring it not only in yourself but to help others as a reverend uh, as a ceremonialist and it's important that we see see our seats in, in that position that we're making the sacred visible but we're not making it sacred it is because it exists and because it exists on this planet. And I started to talk about as the feminine makes that this descend through her body into the root toward the earth. Here's our secret. We start seeking way out in the cosmos and this ethereal energy. And what we're looking for is is the 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 life in the soil the roots that are hundreds of years old the language of the mycelial network all of that unspokenness that because what you sense when you're around women is that they're life givers and by nature we move toward life we move toward what's alive and we're just an extension of the womb of Mother Earth. So where we're all headed, or where I would hope we could turn our direction toward, is toward Mother Earth. Toward tending to that mycelium network. That's the subtle, her subtle language. The the communication between the trees and the rocks and the seasons, just like a woman regenerates monthly. Mother Earth is doing that every day and every season and every year. And that's what you're sensing in our wombs is that wisdom, her wisdom. So we look for these secrets that are like somewhere way out in the distant etheric realms and they're under our feet. So what can I do? What can I do? I mean, I... I see some things that I'm doing that feel good, but I'm curious about what. what yeah. Well, it's a cult. It's a cultivation, just like we cultivate our gardens, and what we cultivate nourishes us. So, the first thing is to not tor torn turn toward your partner as a representation of that but turn toward yourself already sacred already whole already divine and by turning toward yourself first you're 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 honoring something that i sense many deny because they're looking for it outside outside in another person, in in their belonging to a certain group or some sort of doctrine. And you have to turn toward your own truth with honesty. Like what I sense from you, I don't know you well at all, but I sense there's a level of an integrity within you that if you were to really turn inward you would have a pretty good bullshit meter on yourself <laughs> it's better <all> the time <laughs> well the more we practice it and the more that we become unafraid of 
making mistakes, unafraid of of being in the process of becoming. The, the whole idea is to be in that process of becoming and and to curious to the outcome, but not in in the outcome at all. And since our interactions first began, which what which it is just a short period of time, I I've sensed that this seeker in you and this craving and hunger to honor the feminine, it's like it is it is outside of you and it is inside of you, but the until we honor our own being, we're still just reaching for something that that's an illusion. Mm. And so it's like when you can understand that all we all want is what's life giving. Our nature is 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 to organize what toward wholeness then we just stay in the becoming and we can trust our true nature to organize toward that to turn toward that as i turned toward marriage i know this is part of what you wanted me to talk about as i turned toward marriage i married my husband but and we got married for us and and but we got married for our community as well. And our community was involved in that ceremony. We wrote the ceremony that there was layers and layers of vows, concentric circles like a tree trunk. If you were to slice it, we were in the center of that, but there was our parents and then there was our siblings, our nieces and nephews, our community. And we took a series of vows with all of them before we took a vow with one another. Because what we didn't come together to, we came together to create something different. But that something different was built on everything around you, everything that you got. And that, and that that we wanted to be held accountable mm. for for that creation by those around us be held accountable and for them to be the recipients of that and it was in our own wholeness that we honored each other we honored each other we we vowed we each talked about our three um top top three values core values and they're different and i vowed to hold my husband accountable to his values and he vowed to hold me accountable to my values and that we weren't imposing one another's values on each other, but that we were holding one another accountable for our own wholeness. And in that, we came together and created new core values. And we didn't state those new core values until we had um, a late in life gift of a bit of a child. And when and and so when we were held accountable by our, our community, we didn't include family and children because that wasn't in our vision, our vision, but it was in the vision of the union. So when that came to be, we had another ceremony and we stated those core values. To be a word, to be of service, and to be love. And that was the container in which we created another being, which is our son. And, 
and so forth. As parents, we now have shared values and we hold each other accountable for those. And then as individuals that have come together in union, we hold each other accountable for our individual values. And it's not that we don't value each other's values or haven't adopted some of those. But it's that there's an honoring of what, where we've come from, and what and what we're becoming. And these kind of ceremonies mark that. So at some point in your relationship, you turn toward the idea of marriage. Um, had that always been part of how you saw it? Like you didn't always see yourself as being married and didn't always see yourself as being part of a ceremony. We were both very much um, individuals and both of us were pretty single through our adult life. And I got married at um, 39 years old. I were 40, 40 years old and he was 50 years old. Yeah, I was 40 and he was 50. So we got married later on. And when we got together, we weren't we weren't the type that were, were like looking for marriage and children. In fact, when we, we moved in together, we were like, this, I don't do this. I don't either. So this is a commitment. We're committed, <laughs> we're committing to each other. Yes, we're committing to each other. We're building a life with each other. We started um a garden from a blank slate, a, a, a clay lot, and it's a flourishing, gorgeous garden now. But that's what our commitment was, was to grow and to, to expand and to discover and stay curious. And then in that, I mean, the proposal was so organic. It was just like, I, I want to, my um, husband calls me Dovey. I, I, I want to marry my dovey, and that was like he came up behind me and hugged me, and that was it. And I was like, oh, and kind of that day we kind of talked about it, and we went somewhere, and on the way home I'm like, so it's kind of like being engaged. He's like, no, we're engaged now. <laughs> oh, okay. And we like you know got into it, and we does that. We took six months. We created a ceremony. We had it here. We made it. It was a gorgeous display but it it what we really did is we created that next level of becoming with one another and in that we displayed that becoming to our community and shared with them in the becoming and there was an, a true alchemy on that day a true alchemy that we weren't the same as we were before. And it wasn't a goal of ours. It wasn't even in our in our like relationship vision. It was an organic becoming. And the same with with conceiving a child. And I always thought when I was in my twenties and early thirties, like that I would have some kind of, if I were to become a mother, which I was very unsure of wanting that. And as I progressed through, I was pretty sure I didn't want that. But in when I was young, it was like, oh, I'm going to have a conscious conception. And, and it was only conscious to, to that which was moving through us and was envisioning for us. And we became co-creators as we awakened to it. But that's that piece that I'm talking about. If if we have enough surrender to understand the nature of our being, we move toward, we organize. I call it the divine organizing system. It's always moving toward wholeness. And it's operating us. When a tree falls in the forest and it becomes tree rot, that's the divine organizing system because that tree feeds hundreds of trees. It looks like 
death, but it's life giving. So when we come up with struggle into these places where we're bumping up against struggle, if we trust the divine organizing system within us and of Mother Nature herself, we know that that's just tree rot and that's feeding hundreds of trees that are, are, are the, you know, paving the, the forest floor of our soul. so there's lots there that i need to sit with for a while i, I don't even I just i'm just kind of thank you there is some another yeah you have um, to kind of rope me in or i just you gotta like if you want the conversation to go a certain place or else i just well, let that i just let that system move and speak to maybe what's in in the atmosphere well it feels like that's what i needed to hear um like i said i'm i'm about to marry another uh, to marry this couple and it's they've actually been together for a long time and they're just choosing to be married now and and um Well, it's just an interesting process working with them to think about and to hear also what's what's underneath the story. There's a story they tell me and then there's like, and then there's more and it's giving the space for that. Mm -hmm. And I think in my, you know, in my life and in my habits, it's the, what I'm trying to cultivate is, and I love the image of, like for me, the image of the garden is really important in terms of what i'm doing so it's like how do i and there's this whole idea of husbandry that i'm fascinated by like that well we don't actually i think pay a lot of attention to that so to go back to this idea of the, the sacred woman it might be the sacred garden that we're cultivating together and that there's this there's this becoming that wants to become and so how do i that's why i asked like what how what do i do here it's like in my imagination, I'm learning how to be this 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 husband. Like, how do I how do I husband this garden? How do I what role do I play in the cultivation? How do I not be intrusive? You know, so there's different kinds of gardens, and I look at those as a as a metaphor. You know, like there's a very rigid way of gardening, and there's a very chaotic way of gardening and I tend to be more towards the chaotic with little moments of structure and as I watch my own garden I think about well like you know, what am I creating with my life well that's very much you know how I see my my life and how comfortable am I with that because that's the other part of it is you know how comfortable am I with the level of seeming chaos that I allow or that I facilitate and um you know what what are my expectations? What, you know, how, how do I, I, I'm trusting that, you know, those roots are doing their work and that flowers will emerge, but they're not always going to emerge the way I think they will or where I think they will. And, and that the best part of my life is often those things that have come in very surprising ways to me. And how am I open to that? I think it's it's a a skill to develop to really become you say open but I I I want to I want to call it receptive to receive to be a re, a true receiver of of even the chaos like you mentioned chaos and chaos is is creativity it really is it's just unorganized creativity and there there's a process of, of coming from that creative chaos into a, a a place of clarity and it's it's basically there's this chaos and you finally keep your eye on this one thing within that and with that focus 
there's a clarity and inside of that clarity is an action. And that's the action that you take. And that's, and that's the creative process. So chaos isn't, isn't something, but it, there's, it's not bad. I hesitate to even use the word. It's useful. But in, but in the culture we're in, it's, we, it's the culture struggles. Be, well, the culture struggles because they miss the, the clarity piece. They're acting out of the chaos without without finding that thing to keep their eye on, without the focus. So from chaos to clarity to a creative action or a deliberate action, people are going from, out of the chaos into a reaction, therefore not creating. And there is a ton that is created in our garden out of chaos. We let 20% of our garden go to seed. And so things pop up all over every spring. It's really interesting. And I'm in Southern California, so it's kind of happening all year here. But in the spring, particularly, you see last year's garden, but it's been, re it's been moved around. And these seeds fall where they may but the ones that really grow have come out of that place it, uh, into where they're like really strong plants because it's those volunteer ones that often do the best so we've learned over time that it feels chaotic but we start letting some of those go and and thinking that maybe our garden knows better than we do yes. And then the husbandry part comes to the tending, to the tending, and to particularly my husband is is a soil steward, so he's really making dense, rich, nutritive soil, and that is part of the masculine is to nurture. Like we think of women as nurturers because it's natural to us, but what women often need the most is compassion and nurturing. And that a man can hold compassion around the complexities uh, uh, of her sensitivity, of her, like we're living a cycle that is, is is unexplainable so <laughs> you don't really need to understand it and it's like in that wanting to understand it you miss it mm. it's to be witnessed in it and held in it nurtured and tended to in it that makes you a part of it And then the mysteries are revealed to you in, 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 inside of you as your own truth. Because through her, you're learning the secrets of Mother Nature, of, of, of nature herself. And we can make up some divine god or goddess outside of, of this realm. But in all physicality, what we know is real is is the soil beneath our feet and that's what's life-giving so i imagine when i've been made in her image as a life giver that's what's being spoke of The other part of the um, sacred womb conversation that that keeps coming up for me, and 
And again, this was something that I that I heard in your conversation with Kimberly Ann was just questioning our <clears> or <throat> the way I I question our one of my teachers calls you know calls this a hypersexualized culture, and I certainly feel that. And it's interesting for me to talk to men, especially men who are older and who, you know, one of whom was very, very hypersexual in his youth. And, and he felt at one time in his life that he was looking forward to the day when he wasn't so driven by this need to basically penetrate and ejaculate. And, and so now, and he's talking about this now looking back and he's talking about how it's this incredible relief and I and I know for myself as I look at you know how I have been in my sexuality and how much I've missed, and it's the sense of of the woman in front of me as being like I didn't I, I didn't see that sacred part of her I didn't see or how we were part of nature or we were part of something becoming it was all focused on a very simple and superficial uh, exchange basically or maybe not even an exchange <laughs> you know maybe it was just me taking um and and i see so much of that around me and i and I, then i start thinking like i never it has never been presented to me in the kind of complexity that you had in terms of the energy you know having to move down and then up and for us it's having to move a very short distance. But not only a, did I miss... A sh that's a short distance to have that act of coming <laughs> yeah. instead of becoming. But it's a long distance if you're to ascend up and then come back down. Right. So I never or almost never created space for any of that. Most people don't, men and women right so and it was interesting in your conversation because you were both you and kimberly and were talking about sex positivity and being very careful not to judge and not to dial things back to some kind of you know prohibition but to me there's a there's a cost to how we are with our own bodies and with each other's bodies mm -hmm. So one of the things, you know, and especially when I'm working with men is like, how do we, how do we pay more attention to the energy within ourselves and through that become more attentive to the energy happening with the woman that we're interested in and not being so, not being so goal oriented, not, not being so basically orgasm oriented, you know, put it really simply. I'm not sure there's a question in there, but my question yeah. to you is from, from your perspective, I'd, I'd love you to talk some more about how you, how you talk, especially, well, to men and women, but like, how do you, because we all want to have sex. We all want to do this thing. So how do we learn to take a breath and appreciate that there's a lot more going on here? I wish I could remember that conversation because you refer back to it so often and um, <clears throat> I'm not positive what what her and I talked about that day. Um, I never listened to it and mm -hmm. we were in the moment and yeah. we have a lot of conversations on and off recordings, but First, let's have compassion for that drive inside of the man. Like that drive, it, it, when met with the receptivity of the female is, is incredibly powerful and incre incredibly nurturing to her. It's life giving. And it's our culture that hasn't created or basically 
extinguished the things that taught young men how to work with that energy. And so men of your age or, or however you want to say it that look back at that drive, what I want to say is please remove any shame from an energy that, that is um, pure life force. And that you weren't given the tools. It's like putting a sword in someone's hand and a flaming sword in their hand that's like magnetic toward, toward a, an, an, or this flaming sword that's like just pulsating with energy and completely magnetic toward, toward the womb. And then we're going to blame them for wanting to penetrate that space when everything in you is, is pull the life force within you is 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 being pulled toward toward that space if you're a male out there and you, and you're looking back i invite you to please let go of any shame or blame you're carrying upon yourself because it's not an individual's problem. It's a cultural disruption. So my question, or it's not even a question, is The culture at large, for lots of reasons, you know, the, for lots of reasons, has, mm -hmm. has basically devolved to there's only a few ways that you're actually going to get meaning in this life. And one of them is to make a ton of money. And, I, and I'm being very superficial here and very yeah. uh, making generalizations. But one of them is to make a lot of money. Uh, one of them is to have the perfect family and one of them is to have as much sex as possible or much as many or, as actually as as many orgasms as possible because I, I see that's another level it's like okay it's not just not just sex you have to have orgasms and i'm like you know that that misses the point like there's something else that that we could be doing here when we're together like this and mm -hmm. and again this brings in this idea of marriage because so historically marriage was this very claustrophobic kind of thing but how do we make that that sacred space or that holy space where okay this is where we actually get to really open up well what it's about is creating a space for connection do you know that magnetic field that young people are driven and trust me the womb is vibrating just as much as as those swords like it is not it we you know there's been a lot more um it's dangerous for women to it has been in the past for women to act in the way that boys would act for girls to act in the way that boys would act it could mean death yeah, yeah. It, and a long time ago it meant death i mean it meant death for a woman to act out the act of sex outside yeah. of no. marriage and outside of so men were given permission to they used it for domination they used it for power they used it for pleasure w women the reason that men have this reputation and like it, it's an uncontrollable force inside of of a young boy women i want you to know that women struggle with with that too as a, when i was young i had a very high sex drive and I didn't know what to do with the energy either because we're not taught how to hold that energy. And what you're asking about is when we're taught that, then we come together and we hold that energy with one another and for one another. And it 
is what you're talking about. It's the unfurling and the opening into another realm, into a, a, a portal that is a journey into the divine space. It's, but again, I'm going to come back. It's a divine space that is inside of our body. It is not the creation of something otherworldly, even though we see other worlds inside of that. Why we're seeing those other worlds inside of that is because we are the creators of those worlds. So we come together for connection. What, what many women want the most is like, you don't have to have the best technique. You have to have presence and connection and a, a little bit of, of maturity that you're not there to come, but to become. And, and that, I mean, that's the basis. And within that space is that thing that I think you're alluding to or you're you're drawn or, or what is mysterious to you. And it's quite simple. We're just so far removed from it. And there's power in there and that's what they don't want us to have. There's so much power there's so much creation in that space, whether it's procreation or co-creation in that space. And it's about connection. There's a level of focus, not focusing on an, a goal, but a level of focus, meaning presence and presencing. And so we go back into that place where we talk about chaos and like, our culture is in re constant reaction to this chaos because the, it's a distraction from our power. Because when we truly come into that kind of connection, we understand that we're a part of that divine organizing system. And when we start participating with it, we start creating worlds. And these worlds might not include fossil fuels and billionaires <laughs> you know so why wouldn't they want to distract us and i'm not this is not in a way that we're a victim of anything but our own ignorance and and the, i'm not i mean i can sound conspiratorial a little bit but i i i actually would like to have more faith in humanity than that but we are in a extinction phase and so this this urge for connection is like underneath these human minds that we have in this consciousness that we have we're animals and the animal of our body feels it just like all the other animals we're in an extinction phase and so the scrambling to procreate and to, to evolve our species is a natural reaction to an environment that feels a little but less than life-giving. Mm. So please forgive ourselves. For what the animal of our body knows and senses. And how that doesn't always align with what we think is right or wrong or appropriate. Thank you. Men have just as good of heart as a woman. I'm teaching a class right now about the heart and men actually have more neurons in their heart, more brain cells in their heart than women do. And when I found that out in my research, I was shocked. 
I can't, I'm presenting that tomorrow to my class. And I was shocked. Those neurons think, feel, remember, send messages. You have the ability to inhabit and sit in your heart and feel and know and act. With an, an an extreme amount of in, like wisdom, the intelligence that is a a wisdom giving life giving force field of love and protection. And please well, don't think that you're less than because you don't have this sacred womb you keep chasing. <laughs> yeah. You have a good heart, and that's actually what makes us human. We're the only species that can biologically regulate our system because of how our heart functions and our awareness is connected to that. And you as men can be that grandfather clock that ticks and talks and everything can attune to it. You know, if you go into a room with clocks all over the wall and they're all ticking and talking out of sync, if you come back in 24 hours later, they'll all be swinging the same. And they're swinging to that grandfather clock, the one that has the, the largest resonance. They've all attuned to it. And that's like your good heart. So thank you for being interested in the feminine and, and what we might need or want to receive. But know, know that like you're fully capable and, and that um, that inhabit, by inhabiting that space, you begin to, by nature, by the divine organizing system, provide what it is we need. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you've offered this morning. I'm going to um, invite our listener, if they have any questions, to ask a question. So if you do have a question there, um, please unmute yourself and ask. And, and if you don't, that's fine. It'll be in your left-hand corner. There you go. All A. Hi, Gary. Hi. First of all, my God, that was wonderful. I'd love to meet you in person one day. <laughs> my God. Incredible. Uh, I'm going to show you something. Here. I'm an armchair sailor. But what you've, everything that you've spoken to for only about three years. And I think the situation that Hans described about what we were younger and how we changed when we become older, I just relate to that so well. And um, certainly had the privilege to live that just a little bit in the last couple of years. And I, it's just uh, wonderful. And I do regret what I lost all those years because uh, the joy, I think, that comes from exactly the, 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 the I guess I call it the spirituality, sensuality, sexuality is just wonderful. So thank you for bringing life to that file. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, I appreciate um, as I watched you receiving the words and and I could feel how the words were moving with you and through you and 
and you were relating and you know it's it's you men who can share that regret if you want to call it regret with younger men and just let them know that there's more to it it's that there's more to it that's all not that mm -hmm. what it is is in wrong or even incomplete but that there's more mm -hmm. and, I, and i think that, you know the message is that you will be the uh, the male will be the beneficiary of that in so many ways other than the physicality mm -hmm. thank you welcome thanks for yeah, listening thanks, today So with that, um, Katie, I, uh, I'm just really grateful that you were so open to having this conversation. And yeah, there's just so much here that I'm going to be. Yeah, I hope it wasn't too nebulous. <laughs> no, it was, it was, for me, it was great. You know? um, and what Gary said, you know, like the, and then when you follow it up with, like, it's, I think one of the, 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 the simplest messages that I have for younger men who I work with is always to slow down. Um, a, a wise friend of mine gave me that advice many years ago, but I had all kinds of reasons why I couldn't slow down. <laughs> and, and there were prices to pay for not slowing down. And, and so, um, you know, occasionally I see young guys who I work with and they, they do slow down and then they, and then they report back months later, like, wow, like when I slow down, amazing things happen. Um, and what I got a sense of from you was just, it was, it just felt good to, to slow and listen and to, to feel into you connecting your feet to the soil and micro networks and and then how you finished with um you know our hearts i mean there's a reason why we are why we're the courageous ones you know our heart our cur that part of us is, is immensely powerful And I think there's, you know, there's there's so much to explore around the idea of what marriage can be, and as opposed to what how we've experienced or seen our parents or grandparents experience or live it. And um, I loved your story and how you were in the garden and with that proposal and and all that's all the little things that are blossoming. The big thing, having a child. It's, it's quite wonderful me for me right now to watch my daughter parent and be a mother of her children and to watch these two very different girls. And how they basically ask me all the time without saying it, you know, like just just build a safe space so I can be this chaos and have all these feelings and all these experiences. And I get to have the contact high, you know, but it's not just a con, it's like, it's, I feel it in the body. It's just so, and after a weekend with them yesterday, I was thrashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in a good, really good way. Yeah, it's so a lot of energy. It is, yeah. And, and, um, and you brought a lot of energy to this today, and thank you for that. You're it's welcome. Great. Okay. Thanks for having me, hon. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk again, Kate. Bye-bye. Bye, Gary. Bye, Gary.